Hi, I'm Laura Coyle, and in this video, I want to talk about using color in Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. And we're just going to go over some basics and talk about global swatches and some other things. All right, so let's take a look at this artwork right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this color panel, select an object, and I'll move this over a little bit. Whenever you're working in Illustrator uh, and you have a path selected, you have two things that you can color, either the stroke or the fill. So currently I have this object selected and if I tap here on the fill icon, uh, I can change the color of the fill. And then over here below that, I have the stroke color. And so I can assign a stroke color to an object as well. And right now it's kind of hard to see, but if I come over here, and turn that up, we can see the stroke color. So that's just a basic about working in Illustrator. You can color either the fill or the stroke. And it's important to know that because it's a little bit different here in the iPad. So if I come over here to tap on the fill icon here and open up that color panel, we can see that at the top of that color panel, I have the option to make this a solid color or a gradient. And in this, video, we're really only going to focus on solid color, but I just wanted to point this out because over here, if we tap on the stroke icon, um, you can't see those options at the top of the panel. So on the iPad, strokes cannot have a gradient. However, they can on the desktop. So these are really two separate color panels here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove that stroke, just tapping here on the none fill swatch, and then I'll go back to the fill and I'm going to move this little color panel aside here and we can just sort of keep it open as we work because all of this art is really only fills and uh, the strokes are all set to none. All right, so now let's just go through the basics of this color panel. So as you can see here, we have a color wheel interface and that's pretty self-explanatory how you work with that to get saturation, desaturation, darkness, and lightness like that. And then you change the hue by going around here on the wheel. We also have these little icons here where I can just tap to turn this to white, to black, or to none. And there's an eyedropper here and it gives me this little interface here. I can just drag over a color and sample that to the selected object. Below this, I have an alternative to using the color wheel and that is to work here with sliders. So you can see that those changes are updating um, on the color wheel as I do this, but I've got hue, saturation, and brightness there. Um, and in this menu here, I can change those sliders to RGB or CMYK sliders, just like you can on the desktop. And then here, if I have hex codes, I can type them into this field. Next, we have swatches. So here we have just a little menu of color swatches. I can always view this, however, as a list. And this might be helpful if I had descriptive names for any of these. And as we go down here, we can see that these are um, default swatches that just sort of come with any new open document that you open here on the iPad. Now I'll go back to that grid view and notice that some of these actually have a triangle in the corner. That makes it a global swatch. So these default swatches that I'm tapping on here are global swatches. Some of these default swatches right here are non-global or regular or local, whatever you want to call them. Um, but the global swatches have kind of a superpower. So let's go and look at that. I'm going to apply this first swatch, this sort of purple blue swatch, so that it matches the rest of the art. And whenever, I'm just gonna deselect there, whenever I select one of these, you can see that highlighting um, around the swatch there in the swatches panel. If I go to this gold color here, I actually don't have a swatch for that, so you're not seeing anything highlight. Let's go back to the blue. So this is a global swatch, and what that does is it gives you the ability to edit the swatch and then change everything that it's applied to in the artwork. So it updates globally across your artwork. Let's give it a try. So to edit this swatch, just tap and hold on it and then choose edit. And here is where I can change the color and then tap save. And you can see how it updates all of the art that that swatch was applied to. So these are really handy. And it, this is something that you can also do in Illustrator on the desktop and you can sort of work with the same swatches on either side. 
All right, so let me go back here. I'm gonna deselect this and let's say that I want to mix a new color and I'm just gonna close this little hex code area right here and just focus on using the color wheel. So I'll come over here and do this kind of pinkish purple color like that. And if I want to add it as a new swatch, I just tap on this plus button here in the swatches area. And we can see it's automatically added as a global swatch. Um, that means that of course, if I apply it to a couple of these objects here, it will have that same property where I can change the swatch and update the art. But maybe you don't want it to be a global swatch. So how would we change that? Well, here I can just come in here and tap on edit again. And right here's a global checkbox. I'll uncheck that. And now I've got just a regular swatch there. Now let's look at some places that we can get color from here. Just below swatches, we have color books. And this is a list that includes some Pantone libraries, True Match library. And these are just tons and tons of global swatches that you can use to compare to a physical swatch book. So if you have a true match book, uh, this way you can use these swatches and then check them against a physical sample and just make sure that they're gonna print well. So that's one way to use swatches here. Then if I just step back here and go into libraries, here's where I can access swatches that I've saved in my Creative Cloud libraries, in my CC libraries. So here I have my branding, which has these individual swatches here, and then below that are color themes. And those are five color, little color groups that you can create on um, Adobe Color or inside of Illustrator. So there are many ways to create color themes, and this is where they are right here. Now, so far, if I want to use one of these colors in the themes here, I'm just basically tapping on one to select it. There isn't currently a way to add this color theme here, let, let me back up so you can kind of see it here under swatches. Um, I can't add the whole theme to the swatches panel right now. I can just sort of select individual colors by tapping on them. Um, but that may be something that we'll be able to do in the future. So you can see right now, I've got that orange color that I took from one of my library color themes, but I don't have the swatch for it here. So again, to add that swatch, I'm going to tap on the plus sign, it adds it as a global swatch. And then I can always tap and hold to edit that or to make it non-global. And then next to the plus sign, we have this little camera here. So let me show you that. I'm gonna move some artwork that I have here and I've got my iPad and just tap on that and it gives you access to your camera. And I've got an issue of uppercase magazine here and it's allowing me to choose some colors. And you can see it's kind of just automatically choosing them for me. I can raise the number of colors here by using the slider on the left and just get a whole bunch of colors or I can turn it down to just a few colors. Let's come over here. Um, I can always edit these, like that's kind of moving around so fast, it's, it's driving me a little nuts. Let me go ahead and tap on the screen to freeze those color circles and then I can move one over here like onto, trying to get that blue color right there. So that's how you can kind of control all of those crazy circles. All right, then go over to the right and then just tap on this little check mark here. And you can see that adds all of those swatches uh, right there to the color panel. So that's another really cool thing you can do. And again, those are global swatches as well. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed these tips about using color in Illustrator on the iPad. Let me know what you think below in the comments and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you'll get updates on when my next video is ready. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator and related Creative Cloud apps on my website at lauracoylecreative.com. We have monthly Zoom calls and a community and lots of great learning experiences ready for you. So come and check it out. All right, I'll see you next time.